Welcome back. We'd like to introduce a new segment where we welcome a city employee into the studio to tell us a little bit about what they do and what's going on in their department. Today our special guest is Craig Whittington and Craig works with Guilford Metro 911. Now Craig, tell me what is your position at the 911 Center? I'm the Special Projects Coordinator. Okay, tell me more about that, what does that mean? Well, I do a little bit of anything it takes to support. Guilford Metro is big on helping each other and making, doing whatever we can to get the mission accomplished. Right. Um, my job, whether it's working on a grant or a particular area of the, or division of the agency, whether it's working with our phone vendors, whether it's working with our um, recording equipment, our console vendors, uh, whether it's working with the city's facilities and, and doing construction, whatever, uh, or it's doing public information such as talking to you or, or anyone. Okay. Um, that's pretty much, I, I take care of whatever needs to get done so that we can accomplish our mission. Make it happen. Okay, yes, tell me tell me about, there have been some major changes at the 911 Center. Tell yes, me a little bit about what's going on. We were very, infor or very fortunate. Um, each month, uh, every taxpayer in the state of North Carolina that has a phone pays 60 cents on their phone. Mm -hmm. The state collects this and then disperses it back under very strict guidelines to the 911 centers in the state. And it's based on your needs. Well, we've tried for the last three years to convince the state, and we finally did, that we needed to expand our 911 center. Okay. So we were very fortunate to be approved for the funding to go from a little over 2,000 square foot to over 5,400 square foot wow. while staying in the same building. Okay. We've not moved. There's a there's a rumor that we're in a new building, but it just looks like it from the inside. It's the same old, same old place. Okay. Um, we used uh, a lot of local artisans. Uh, it's amazing the vendors in our, our city and our county that are such great, the electricians, the, the carpenters, the sheetrockers, everybody that did such a great job. Uh, we now have a, a state-of-the-art 911 center that's also beautiful to look at and it's comfortable for our employees who work in very stressful conditions. Right, so it sounds like this has been a community effort. It really it's has, it really has. And the, and the really great part is that the taxpayers really didn't have to cough up a lot of money um, uh, out of just general tax funds. I was going to ask about that. Tell me about the funding. Where that comes from? Well, like I said, the state collects this money, and they're going to use it on 911 Center somewhere in the state. Right. And we were very fortunate. The project was a little, slightly over four million bucks to, wow. and that's a lot. That is a lot for anybody, especially in these economic times. And the majority of that money, in fact, four million plus, will come back to us over the next four years as we pay the leases on this equipment. Right. So it's a very, it's, it was a very good thing we had an opportunity to do for the citizens of the county and the city. And that is a big deal. Tell me about the operators. Are they excited about these changes? What, what has changed for them? I hope they are. Um, expanding the room, we are also able to expand the consoles. Okay. We had 20 in the old room, we have 26 now. We have the ability and we've pre-wired and we've pre-designed to go up to 40 in the room. If we need. Wow. I think originally when we consolidated, the city brought over 13 people on the shift. Now we have 23 on the shift. Um, you know, we've gotten busier every year. It never slows down. It's like the fire department, the police department, EMS. They're all our customers too, and they get busier and busier. Absolutely, right. Now the, now the operators, do they have any special new gadgets at their console? Is it, has it, have you updated anything? A ton of stuff. Yeah. One of the things we were able to do was we were able to um, replace the consoles or the, or the workstations right. as most people call them. The consoles we had had not been replaced since 1996. They were no longer manufactured, we couldn't get parts. Even trying to find a simplest $50 piece to fix something broke was $1,000 and we just didn't see that as a good a good use of tax dollars. So we were able to get the state money to just replace the furniture. It had served us well, we had gotten our money out of it. Uh, these new consoles we hope will go 10, minimum at least 15 and maybe even 20 years. Wow. Um, and uh, by doing some of the pre-planning we did and the thinking ahead of what's going to go on after I'm gone and others are gone, um, we're actually able to get the room ready to go up to 40 consoles, which should supply hopefully for a couple of three decades before we have to even start looking in another building. Wonderful. Will the public notice a difference when they call into the center? I actually hope not because the, um, the whole idea here is whether we're in our backup, which is our, or the old county center off Meadowood, or we are a, um, in our main center. The customers, our citizens, our responders in the field, who are all our customers, right. should never see a difference. They should get high quality service. Um, we know that faster is not always better, but we know more accurate is always better. So if we can do things more accurately, if we can get better information, we can give our field responders better information. We actually hope you never have to call us. Right. We, we hope no one ever has 
the incident to the level they have to dial 911. But if they do, I think the citizens and the businesses and our visitors and our passers-by in Guilford and Greensboro can rest assured we will do the best job as possible. Right, as efficient as possible. That's yeah, I, I've been in the business over 34 years. Mm -hmm. My career is winding down now, mm -hmm. but I'm working with some of the best professionals I ever have in my life. I've been blessed to see a lot of this world and a lot of this country and mm -hmm. visit a lot of 911 centers. The folks we have at Guilford Metro are the tops. You can't get any better than what we've got. That is so good to hear. Craig, thank you so much for coming on our show today. It was a pleasure to Welcome. meet you. And for all of you that work over at Guilford Metro 911, thank you for your commitment to the city and all of your hard work. To find out more information on Guilford Metro 911, visit the city's website at www.greensboro-nc.gov gm911. There you can find news updates, special programs, and specific contact information. The city is gaining a little buzz after planting some new trees along the downtown Greenway. Here's David Flieger to tell us all about it. Well, along the downtown Greenway here, we're putting in these tree boxes, or tree wells we call them, and it treats the stormwater runoff coming off the street. So some of that dirty, polluted water that's got a lot of oil and grease or you know, brake linings and so forth that's coming off the street and it washes into these tree boxes instead of just going directly into a storm drain, which washes directly to our creek. So now that they come into these tree boxes, they filter through this specialized media, soil media, and it filters any of the pollutants before they reach the storm drain system. Along the downtown Greenway, this is one of the first places we've seen in town that have, we've had the example to do this, or the opportunity to do this. Uh, it's a lot easier to come in up front during the planning stages and construction stages to do this, as opposed to say after the fact when it's all built out and we have to tear it up and then, re and then do it. So what we work with the downtown Greenway in order to comply with some of the future Jordan Lake regulations for nutrient management, as well as our regular stormwater regulations to improve water quality, and uh, worked with the downtown Greenway who wants to be innovative and do these green things, and again, put the green back in the greenway. And so we worked with them and created this opportunity to do it now while it's a lot cheaper than coming back after the fact and doing it later, where it'd be a lot more expensive. In addition to what we're seeing here in downtown, we're doing some of this elsewhere in town as well. There's a, uh, some tree wells we're exploring up at JC Park, and we're looking at some impervious parking where the water will flow into the pavement itself and soak in before it just runs off. We're also looking at retrofitting a couple of different examples, biocells, rain gardens, and in a number of different places around town. And again, to comply with some of the new nutrient management rules that are coming down through the Jordan Lake rules, as well as just our regular stormwater permit. We have to improve the quality of the water. So we're looking all over town for different examples and areas to do this type of work. This is one of the first examples we're going to see in town, though. Uh, there's plenty of information on the city's website, which is www.greensboro-nc.gov, both under the Parks and Recreations website as well as the Transportation's website about the Downtown Greenway. Of course, you can always go to the Downtown Greenway's website, which is downtowngreenway.org, and find out all kind of information about the Downtown Greenway. Uh, of course, the Water Resource Department, under the Stormwater Division, we have lots of information about all the innovative ideas we're trying to do around town to improve water quality. Wow, thanks David. It's really exciting to see some new and innovative ideas being put into place to better our city and our environment. Now back in December, the Economic Development and Business Support Office welcomed Kathy Duvell to their team as the new manager of EDBS. We caught up with Kathy, and here's what she had to say. Prior to working for the city, I worked with Greensboro Economic Development Alliance, part of the Greensboro Partnership, doing new business recruitment, also working with existing industries um, in the cluster development. I was with uh, Greensboro Economic Development Alliance for six and a half years. The opportunity to look at the economic development um, for the city of Greensboro in a different way, I guess kind of on the other side of the line, um, looking at it from more a policy perspective, from being able to work with the, the complete city staff and looking at an overall strategy for economic development and frankly uh, the real energy that I've noticed in uh, the recent uh, or the new city council uh, as well as our uh, mayor there are lots of ideas there's a lot of energy there's a lot of focus on economic development and job creation and bringing Greensboro to a new level um, and that was very exciting to me and something I wanted to be part of I'm joining a strong team uh, that has been in place for about a year, as you mentioned. Uh, I've worked closely with a, uh, one of the um, people here, the economic development uh, side of it, John Schaffner, 
for the last six and a half years in, in my position with Greensboro Economic Development Alliance. So I think that um, my past experience in recruiting companies to Greensboro and understanding what they're looking for, uh, the relationships that I've built over time with the key people in the consulting community that help these companies make decisions, help them in their site selection, in understanding uh, kind of the, the back um, decision-making process that companies go through, the complex matrices of various aspects of the decision-making process that enables me to look at what the city uh, can offer a company and make sure that we're out front when we need to support uh, GEDA uh, with pr prospective companies as well as when we get calls in from companies, existing companies in Greensboro that are looking to expand, have questions about whether or not we can be of assistance to them, we're right out front making sure that we are. For more information about the EDBS office and how we may be able to help you, you can reach us at 373-2489 or at our website www www.greensboro-nc.gov forward slash edbs. Thanks, Kathy. And again, welcome aboard. Last month, the Greensboro Police Department held a two-day safe surrender event encouraging gun owners to turn in their unwanted firearms. In the wake of the unfortunate tragedy in Newtown, Connecticut, the safe surrender event was held as a way to get unwanted weapons off the street. During the two-day event, 74 total guns were turned in, including 17 semi-automatic pistols, 22 revolvers, 15 shotguns, and 20 rifles. At any time throughout the year, residents can call the non-emergency line at 373-2222 to coordinate turning in any unwanted firearms. And remember, any weapons surrendered can be done so anonymously. Next month, the Parks and Recreation Department is holding its annual Battle of Guilford Courthouse reenactment. The reenactment takes place March 16th and 17th at Country Park. Visit the website at www.grainsboro-nc.gov parks for registration information. And here's a look at more upcoming events for the month of March. Now it's time to find out the answer to this month's fun fact. The question was, how many times has the Greensboro Coliseum hosted the men's ACC tournament? The answer is C. The Greensboro Coliseum has been host to the men's ACC tournament 23 times and the women's ACC tournament 13 times, making sure Greensboro truly lives up to the name Tournament Town. Well, that's it for this month's show. Until next month, I'm Jody Baumgartner with City Connections.